Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. For today's video, we'll be looking at the performance of NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1080 graphics card, or more specifically, how memory frequency impacts performance. Actually, the card we'll be using for testing will be Gigabyte's really heavy Extreme Edition card. Now, when these cards were first announced, or this GPU rather was first announced, many were concerned that the GPU would be limited by the use of GDDR5X memory rather than HBM memory. Also, compounding the issue was the fact that we were only seeing a sort of mid-range, if you will, 256-bit memory bus being used. Uh, but once the cards landed, they pretty much delivered mind-blowing performance in all the latest games, and yet many have still been suggesting that their memory bandwidth limited. The concern seemed reasonable enough. After all, the previous generation GTX 980 Ti sported a 384-bit wide memory bus, and when coupled with 7 gigabits per second GDDR5 memory, that resulted in a peak bandwidth of 336 gigabytes per second. The GTX 1080, on the other hand, is limited to a bandwidth of 320 gigabytes per second despite using faster GDDR5X memory, and the reason for this being that it uses a narrower 256-bit wide memory bus. Given that the GTX 1080 boasts vastly superior shader power to that of the 980 Ti, you have to wonder how a reduction in memory bandwidth might impact performance, and this is why many were suggesting a memory bottleneck could be an issue. Those figures alone would suggest that it very much is. However, there are a few tricks NVIDIA's latest Pascal architecture has up its sleeve. Being the more refined architecture, Pascal boasts a number of improvements over Maxwell that helps with memory bandwidth. For starters, each SM unit features half as many CUDA cores, and this is important because each cluster still has the same 64 kilobytes of shared memory. Essentially, this means each core has 50% more memory at its disposal. You'll also find a larger level 1 cache, along with a much larger level 2 cache. Then, as I'm sure many of you know, as we did touch on it in our launch day coverage, Pascal features a more advanced colour compression algorithm which helps reduce memory bandwidth demands even further. Then, getting back to the GTX 980 Ti, that particular GPU wasn't memory bandwidth limited at all. In fact, downclocking the memory frequency showed that it has bandwidth to spare. And of course, after all, Nvidia isn't going to waste money developing a complex GPU only to hinder its performance with a memory bandwidth bottleneck. So you can safely assume that the GTX 1080 isn't memory bandwidth starved, but we thought why not take a look anyway. It's also worth keeping in mind that although Nvidia's spec sees the 1080 pair with GDDR5X memory capable of 10 gigabits per second, it has been proven time and time again that this same memory has no issue providing a throughput of 11 gigabits per second, and some cards have even reached 12 gigabits per second. So it's fair to say that the memory has been clocked very conservatively. Had the 1080 required more bandwidth, you can bet Nvidia would have pushed the memory harder. Increasing the GDDR5X memory transfer speed to 11 gigabits per second increases the 1080's bandwidth by 10% to 352 gigabytes per second, and that's a decent boost. Anyway, for a fun little test, I've taken the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme Edition graphics card, which comes with the core overclocked by almost 10% out of the box. The memory has also been factory overclocked slightly above the NVIDIA reference specification, but that's not an issue for this test as we have manually set the memory frequency for each test. For testing, our overclocked Core i7-6700K test machine has been used, and as always, the latest display drivers available at the time of testing have been used. I figured it best to check out performance at not just 4K, but also the 1440p resolution. In total, just three games have been used for testing, but they are newly released and very demanding titles, so they paint a pretty clear picture. With that, let's jump to the benchmarks. First, let's see how the GTX 1080 memory scales in Gears of War 4. Out of the box, the Gigabyte Extreme Edition card was good for an average of 99 FPS with a minimum of 82 FPS at 1440p. Reducing the memory throughput by 8% dropped the average frame rate by just 2% and the minimum by even less. Overclocking the memory boosted the average frame rate by 2% and the minimum by almost 4%. That's not bad, though we found exceeding 11.2 gigabits per second didn't improve performance further. Increasing the resolution to 4K, we averaged 49 FPS at the stock memory speed with a minimum of 41 FPS. Reducing the memory bandwidth by 8%, so a 4% reduction in performance, or 5% if we look at the minimum frame rate. Increasing the bandwidth by 12% to 11.2 gigabits per second didn't improve the average frame rate, and it only boosted the minimum by a single frame. Deus Ex Mankind Divided has some slightly different results for us, 
Out of the box, the Gigabyte Extreme Edition card was good for 62 FPS on average, with a 52 FPS minimum. Overclocking the memory further had absolutely no impact on anything, a bit like a fanboy arguing in the comments section. However, when we take a bit of wind out of the 1080 sales by reducing the memory throughput to 9.2 gigabits per second, the performance drops by 8% for the average and 10% for the minimum. This does suggest that the 1080 is right on the limit in terms of bandwidth. Even at 4K, we see no extra performance gained when overclocking the memory. The same 32 FPS on average is rendered, however, reducing the memory throughput by 8% impacted performance quite heavily. Here, the average frame rate dropped by 6% and the minimum by 11%. Interestingly, the performance hit here was even greater than the reduction in bandwidth, as it seems the memory bottleneck really hurts efficiency. Like Mankind Divided, we found that there is absolutely no performance gains to be had when overclocking the GDDR5X memory further, at least without also overclocking the CUDA cores. The same 107 FPS average can be seen when running the memory at 10, 11.2 and 11.8 gigabits per second. The minimum frame rate did jump up by a single frame, but that's almost not worth talking about. What is worth mentioning is the 5% reduction in performance seen when under clocking the memory. Granted, it isn't that significant, but we do find a tipping point where the GTX 1080 becomes bandwidth limited. Even at 4K, we see no more than a single extra frame being rendered with the memory overclocked. Underclocking the memory reduced performance by 5% on average. And this isn't a significant drop off, but it does prove that even a factory overclocked GTX 1080 graphics card, such as the Extreme Edition version we used, is pretty much getting the most out of the GPU with the stock GDDR5X memory. Well, there you have it. I did originally intend to show you guys some side-by-side -side gameplay footage, but with just a few frames the difference, it didn't really make for an exciting comparison. For those of you wondering why I didn't wind the GDDR5X memory speed down even lower, the reason for that being that this was the lowest frequency that MSI's Afterburner software would allow. It may have been possible to create a custom BIOS to go even lower or do something along those lines, but for now I think the 9.2 gigabits per second data confirms what we set out to find. Even when running a heavily factory overclocked GTX 1080, such as the extreme gaming model that I used, the standard GDDR5X memory specification is ample for the most part. Underclocking the memory by 8% resulted in a performance loss for all three games tested. For the most part, around 5% of the original performance was dropped, though at times we did see up to an 11% drop. In short, it looks as though the GTX 1080 is right on the edge when it comes to memory bandwidth. Lowering the memory frequency just a bit, you do start to see the performance fall away. Uh, going the other way though, unless you've overclocked the CUDA cores, increasing the bandwidth, or rather the memory frequency, won't result in any added performance. This makes the upcoming GTX 1080 Ti rumour that the card might not even feature GDDR5X memory quite interesting. Personally, I believe it will have to. Even with the 384-bit wide memory bus of the Titan XP, the 1080 Ti would only have 20% more bandwidth than the GTX 1080 if it were to use GDDR5 8 gigabits per second memory. Given that the Ti model is meant to offer 30% more CUDA cores, it's going to need a little extra bandwidth. Anyway, enough speculation. I think I'll just wait for the 1080 Ti to come knocking on my door before I read too much further into that one, and hopefully it does so shortly after Vega hits our test bed. Anyway, I hope you guys found the testing interesting. I know it wasn't super in-depth, but I think the test results were fairly conclusive anyway. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the testing, and if you have any ideas for similar kinds of tests, let me know. Anyway, I'm your host, Steve. Thanks for watching.